when it is night, there is always day. When it was an age of darkness, it was also a time for light. Islam's golden age was a time of prosperity and advancement, a flourishing civilization with a superior quality of life. With Islam as their driving force, Muslim scholars excelled in various fields of specialty. They were intellectually unrivaled, particularly in literature, science and technology. What paved the way for Muslim scientists was the community's ability to sustain its growing economy. This was achieved with advances in technology, especially in the area of agriculture. Networks of wells continuously provided communities with water. Water raising machines were used mainly for irrigation. Muslims made many advances in this area of technology, improving efficiency and automating many processes. The perfection of this utilitarian technology was the portal to the birth of fine technology where it became a display of splendor and a status of prosperity. Art was no longer confined to paintings and pottery, but it also included scientific innovations. Around the year 1200 AD, and in the tradition of the Caliphate era in preserving and documenting knowledge, the Sultan commissioned Badi al zaman Abu al-Iz Ismail bin al-Razaz al-Jazari to write a great book that details his work. Al Jazari was clearly an established engineer who understood all aspects of utilitarian and fine technology. It is evident from his book that he drew ideas from Archimedes of Greece, Hero of Alexandria, Philo of Byzantine, and other Islamic engineers such as the Banu Musa brothers and Ridwan ibn Sa'ati. Components from each of those names can be seen in Al Jazari's designs. However, he did not just reproduce them, but he used the ideas as part of a grander design. He put together the Book of Knowledge of Ingenious Mechanical Devices. It consisted six chapters. Each chapter was dedicated to a particular type of device. Water clocks, water raising, fountains, ritual wash basins, drinking games and miscellaneous devices. The major categories are further subdivided to describing each device. The book did not just describe each device, but provided full construction details. This gave engineers the freedom to recreate or to further develop the work. Al Jazari's castle water clock is probably the grandest device. Standing at about 10 feet wide and 11 feet tall, it featured a large zodiac dial at the top. 12 pairs of small doors, 12 small illuminated dials, 2 falcons, and 5 life-sized figures of musicians producing sound or music. Archimedes first documented a clock using a descending float tank. The castle clock follows the same principle. A float is controlled by the outflow of water from its tank. This float is also sufficiently heavy enough to drive pulleys around the clock. The outflow of water can be used to power other mechanisms. Al Jazeera made the clock more accurate and used ideas of pneumatics and siphons, first described by Hero and Philo and developed by the Banu Musa brothers. The elephant clock is another example of Al Jazari's meticulously designed devices. By incorporating the elephant and the dragons, it displays faithfulness and gratitude to Indian and Chinese engineering. The book also illustrates fully automated water raising machines that derive their power from rivers or streams, as well as devices powered by animals.
If one can sum up al jazaris contribution to science, it would be that he is the one who introduced the concept of automation to engineering. He also beautified engineering with practical artistry and imagination. al jazari is but one of the countless Muslim scientists overlooked by history.